Okay, so hi there folks, we're now in our next video in the mathematics in the modern world. Some um, schools know this by MMW. So in this chapter in this course or in this playlist, we're going to talk about tessellations. Okay, and what tessellations are. All right. Now, um, let's first define what a tessellation is. So a tessellation is created when a shape is repeated covering a plane without any gaps or overlaps. Again, it's a repeated shape, okay? It's covering a whole plane that is a surface, you imagine it's a surface. It's covering it without any gaps in that shape and without any overlaps. So meaning it's it it completely um it completely covers a surface. Okay? So it can also be um thought of as a pattern covering okay the plane by fitting together replicas okay of the same basic shape it may be um um it may be reflected it may be translated it may be dilated or something but it's a replica of the same shape um just to make it fit okay in a surface so that's what tessellation is so um Tessellations, where it, where does tessellation start? So tessellation um, have been created maybe by nature or by man, either by accident or design. So examples range from simple hexagonal pattern of the, for instance, the beads honeycomb. I'm going to give you a picture in a while. Um, those are examples of tessellations. As you can, you can see, um, well, let me draw that. Let me try to draw that. So this is a bees um, honey wax. And then you can see that it tessellates, if I can make that as a verb, like this. Okay, then you can see the next batch of, of um, Hanwax to be here, here, and then so on, and so on. So this is one particular example, sorry, <laughs> it should be like that. Okay, so that's um, bees, hon um, bees um, honeycomb. Okay, the snake skin, I'm going to give you a picture of that. Okay, a tiled floor is a very basic example of a tessellation. Like you have, say, square tiles. So it's very basic, but it's what we call a tessellation. It's covering a plane. It's um, being done by replicas of the same thing. And basically, it's a, it's a tessellation. So simple as that. Okay, to the intricate decorations of the Moors in Spain. Okay, in the 13th century, I'm going to give you a picture of that. And the mosaics created by, of course, most famously, by Maurits Cornelis Escher in the 20th century. Okay, so we're going to talk about Escher in a while, and then I'm going to give you examples of this honeycomb here, of the snake skin and the tiled floor. So this is one example of the honeycomb. Um, we have talked about this um, in your in your Fibonacci sequence in Numbers and Natures. So these are tessellations. These are honeycombs. You can see the bees over there making use of that. Um, you can see the snake skin, you know, see the skin of your best friend or or whatever. <laughs> okay. And we can see the tile floors, not um, not necessarily um, square tiles, but you can see hexagonal tiles here. But it's pretty much a, a tessellation. It covers a plane. There's no overlapping. There's no gaps. Okay. Pretty much um, follows our definition of what a tessellation is. Um, in Morris, in the... Moors in the 13th century Spain, this is one example, um, it tessellates as far as the surface is concerned. So you can see this um, this picture here, this image, it's it tessellates over here, and it's here, and on so on. Sorry for that. So it, it tessellates and so on, and as far as the, as the plane or the surface is concerned. So those are examples of tessellations in the moors. And of course, this one. Um, this actually is entitled as angels and demons. Um, you can see there the black, maybe you can you can clearly see the black figures to be the demons, you know. But try to imagine the spaces between the demons. You can see the angels. Okay. If you haven't saw that yet, so you can see that we have angels here and demons here. And then uh, at the other part, it's the opposite. The head is is um is is, is uh, the head of a demon. It's, it's just adjacent to that is the head of the of another angel, and then so on. As you can see, it tessellates, it tessellates until it will reach um at the far um circumference of the circle, and you will see infinite number of angels and demons at the very circumference. Okay, this is one of the very very many. Okay, art and tessellation designs by Maurits Cornelis Escher. 
So Escher um, was born in around 1898 and then died in 1972, um, fairly recently. He is um, considered to be the father of tessellation. Okay, he elaborated tessellation as a mathematical, as mathematical, but also artistic. Okay, it's mathematical and also artistic. So one particular example of, of the work of Mauritz and or rather Escher, I'll call him Escher, um, is, oh, you know, the angels and demons. We have shown that a while ago. This is also one of the horses, as you can see, the black ones are going this way and the white ones going this way. And but the, the clear picture is that there's no gaps. Okay, and okay, there's no gaps and um, there's no overlapping. Okay, you can see that it really fits on the edges of the of the images, and then the other the other image adjacent that fits in perfectly. As you can see, how in, how intricate that is. Also, these are this is also one example of Escher's work. Um, this is a mythical creature, a Pegasus, uh, a horse with wings, and then you, it's you can see that it fits clearly. Okay, it fits clearly to the whole surface. As far as the surface is concerned, you know this this rectangle here. <laughs> All right. Um, and then um, we'll see more of these tessellations in the future. Um, we're going to talk about the kinds of tessellations, you know, regular, semi-regular, demic tessellations. And then we're going to touch in this in this um, chapter, we're going to touch fractals. So that's that's Azure, again, um, famously known as the father of tessellations. So um, in geometrical terminology, okay, a tessellation is a pattern resulting from an arrangement of regular polygons okay to cover a plane okay the the the, the, the common denominator is it's covering a plane or it's covering a surface without any gap or overlapping as was um you know emphasized a while ago the patterns are usually repeating okay so this is a definition by scott um, in his book in 2008 so for instance it Again, from the words of Escher, it is mathematical but also artistic. You can put some colors with it. All right, so you can see this this octopi here. So um, not only um, we can see that clear that, that that this is a tessellation. There's no overlapping. There's no gap. It covers the plane. Okay. Not only that, um, the images are tessellating, but look at the colors. The colors are also tessellating. You can see that the purple ones here. Okay, and the pink ones here, making it creating a diamond, or you can maybe you can imagine that as a diagonal. You can see, or this one a diagonal. You can see the green ones creating a, a, a di um, diamond. Also, you can think of it as a diagonal. The orange ones are also doing that same same stuff. So, so not only the the images, but also the colors are tessellating. Um, this one here, it if you're not going to look at it closely, so you can just see a plain a plain art. But if you're going to see it clearly, um. You can see that the we have blue fishes out here in a bird's eye view, all right, and then we have red fishes here, and they're 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 pointing their their um their mouths, uh, as if we can say their mouths are in the center, and we can see the red fishes um pointing all together there, and then the blue fishes also do the, does that, and then uh, beside um we have also blue fishes here, and then their fins all together fits right in here, and then you can see that it's it's being done in the whole plane. Okay, and then that's one example of tessellation. And also, um, we have also here, um, these are birds, and um, as of as of the same um, um, pattern as here, and the, with the fishes, it does the same thing. It they 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 um, they tessellate. They have this common point. We have the red birds and we have the blue ones. So we can see different um, different images of birds, different um, actions. But the the thing is, there's no gap. There's no overlapping, and that's a tessellation. It covers the whole plane. Okay, and that's the that's that's the beauty of it. You know, um, it's not only that um, you can see it as mathematical objects, but it can be used in art. Actually, it is being used in art. Okay, so. Next time you see it's something and then there's no gaps or overlapping and then you see something and then it catches your attention, look closely, maybe it is one example of a tessellation. Okay, so um, that's it for this video so far. Um, that's the end of our topic of our topic here. Um, in the next batch of videos, we're going to talk about the kinds of it.
Um, we're going to talk about regular tessellations, its properties, how do we name a tessellation, for example, um, the semi-regular, the demi-regular, and then we're going to talk about um, fract the fractals, all right? And we're going to talk about Benoit Mandelbrot in the future. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope you'd like and subscribe. See ya!